How's it going everyone? Today I'm going to share an experiment where we try to see how many microgreens we can fit into a single tray and still get a healthy harvest. So stay tuned for the experiment. All right, y'all, it has been forever since we have done any kind of seed density trial in our grow space. So that's exactly what I'm gonna, going to be doing today with the crop of broccoli. So I've gone ahead and seeded a whole bunch of trays here, and you might be noticing that these are actually different trays than we normally use. So as you can see in our grow space, we normally fill up all of our shelves with these 10, 20 trays right here, which work incredibly well from Bootstrap Farmer. But I saw these trays on Amazon and I ordered some out of curiosity and they turned out to be pretty dang sturdy and solid looking trays. So what I'm gonna be doing is kind of playing around with these over the next few weeks to see if we can make some successful grows happen in these and if they have any kind of commercial potential. So to do that, what I need to do is figure out if I can fit the same amount of seeds inside this tray that I normally fit inside my 1020 tray. Now this is gonna be cramming these trays up because these are actually just about, uh, just under half the size of one of these trays. So to give you guys an idea, these are 200 square inches, these 10, 10, 20 trays, because they are 10 inches by 20 inches, which makes 200 square inches. And these are actually 8.5 by 11.5. So we're at 97.75 square inches. So just about under half of the normal size of our 10, 20s. So what I have done is I've seeded each one of these trays with densities starting at our normal density over here and working our way up to an insane density on this very last tray. Uh, to see if we can get some successful grows out of these. So to give you guys an idea, what we normally seed in a 1020 tray like this for broccoli is 20 grams per tray. Now, if you do the 200 square inches, that breaks down to 0.1 grams per square inch. So what I've done for this first tray is I seeded it exactly at that same density. So this first tray is seeded at 10 grams for this tray, which is at 97.75 square inches. So it's just a hair over 0.1 uh, grams per square inch. But for the sake of math, let's just say that it's 100 square inches because we're just basically right there. Tray number two is seated at 15 grams. So this is actually 0.15 grams per square inch. And this is 150% higher in density than the tray number one. Tray number three has 20 grams in it, which makes it 0.2 grams per square inch. And that is actually 200% higher than tray number one. And tray number four is seated at an insane 25 grams, which breaks down to 0.25 grams per square inch, which is 250% higher in its seating density than tray number one over here. I mean, you guys could just see the total difference between these two trays here. There's basically no breathing room between these uh, seeds over here on tray number four, which is likely gonna cause some problems. So the reason you do not wanna just dump a whole bunch of seeds into a tray and hope for the best is because you are likely going to run into issues. The reason we've settled with 0.1 grams per square inch is because we found that we get the most successful grows. We get really nice harvest weights. We don't have any issues with dampen off or mold or um, any kind of stress happening to the plants from incredible densities. And that's why we've stuck to these low densities. So one thing that would be really exciting to see in this test is if we can get this tray number three right here to grow successfully. And the reason I'm focused on tray number three is because this is the same density that we plant a normal 1020 tray. So if you guys look, just to give you an idea, it's just under half the size of this tray. So if we're able to successfully grow this tray, then I've increased my efficiency within this space tremendously. So that's why I'm really excited about tray number three. And if we somehow get tray number four to grow without any issues, I will honestly just be kind of blown away because there is literally no breathing room between all of these plants. And this is really gonna choke our air flu flow <laughs> through all of these plants which is, it really increases our chances of something bad happening to this crop and us losing it all together. So that was a pretty quick overview of what's going on with all these trays. Now let me tell you what's actually happened to these trays so far and what we're gonna be doing going forward. So all of these trays have been stacked now for two days. This is actually day three of the grow. And that's where you can see all the germination uh, right now. So as you can see, a lot of these seeds uh, have not fully germinated yet. So these are not done with their germination period. 
I just wanted to share the test at this point because this is about the time that we should start seeing issues if there are gonna be any because of the crazy densities. So what I'm gonna be doing going forward is these actually still need to go back into germination like I mentioned. So we're just gonna get all these kind of stacked back up and placed back into germination. I'm just kind of showing you guys how I did this real quick. Now something fun about these trays too that I haven't talked about yet is you can see, so they're, they're mesh trays, kind of like the bootstrap farmer trays. And a lot of the roots do kind of grow down a little bit through them. And I just thought it was pretty cool. I really like the tray design on these. So I just want to share that. So what we're going to do is I'm going to get this put back on top. I'm going to add about five pounds of weight to this using a sandbag. And I'm going to continue to water this twice daily just to make sure these stay nice and moist throughout their germination process. And then in about two days, these should actually be ready to go into the light once they've gone through their blackout. And I'm really excited to see if we can get all the way to harvest day. So that's it for now. I'll keep you guys updated throughout this entire process. All right, today is day four of this seed density trial. So let's go ahead and get this weight removed from the top and take a peek at all of our trays. So at first glance, I'm like, holy cow with this number four tray, because that is an insane density that I haven't seen in a while. All right, so here's number four and check out those roots. So we definitely need to unstack today because I felt it actually snag into the tray below it, which is pretty cool. And I am very happy with that root structure. Very white, very healthy looking roots. So it's time to get these, it's kind of like propping itself up. Uh, it's time to get these into blackout. See, watch, this is, you can see how rooted this is into the tray below it. That's crazy, that's crazy, I tell ya. And it kind of holds itself up. All right, number two, try not to mess up that medium. So you can see I've collected a lot of the seed holes from the tray below it on all these stacked ones. So that's not ideal because that's gonna begin to decay in the uh, roots, but hopefully we should be able to get through the whole grow without any issues. And then here's the last tray, which has a pretty healthy root structure too. It's a lot smaller compared to the others, but it's seeded a lot less densely. Setting these all side by side, everything looks awesome. I see about 90% of the seed holes gone right now. I'm gonna pull this guy out because this is just a, uh, the radicals are pointing upwards and this isn't going to grow right. So I'm just going to go ahead and pull these out so we don't get those just dying in the canopy. So taking a look, like I said, we've removed most of the seed holes and all this growth looks really great. So what we need to be doing today is we're going to move all of these into blackout since all of these are ready to start actually standing up and going into the light. And let's kind of see if we see any signs of disease on this crazy dense one over here. I'm kind of taking a peek. I don't see any signs of a mold or anything down at the roots. So I'm very happy with this growth. So it is really moist right here in the canopy, as you can see on my fingers, that glistening. So that's something to be, uh, we just need to keep our eye on, make sure it doesn't stay too moist in this canopy. And that's something that's probably gonna be happening without this throughout this tray, throughout the entire duration of this grow, is moisture getting trapped in here because of the lack of airflow between all these sproutlings here. But hopefully we should be able to get solid grow out of this. Taking a look at the others, same thing. I'm not seeing any, signs of like mold down at the uh, roots. I do see a few little uh, broccolis flipped upside down there, but that's all right. Same thing right here. I'm just gonna pull out anything that's kind of flipped up so it doesn't just die in our canopy. Uh, same thing on these lower densities. Taking a look at all these trays one by one, the seed density looks great on tray number one. Uh, again, very healthy, happy. Tray number two looks great as well. Healthy and happy, nothing at the roots that looks like mold or disease. Tray number three, same thing. I'm not seeing any sections dying off or any signs of anything to worry about. And tray number four, it looks just insane in my opinion. It looks like a carpet is what it looks like. <laughs> Good news is I don't see any like areas where it's dying off or any signs of disease or anything like that. So what we need to do today is actually put these into blackout. So the one thing I like about these trays is the set of two works really well for stacking um, and uh, blackout, you can use basically the two trays for every part of this process that you need to, to commercially get these uh, to the point of harvest. So I'm gonna take this top lid. And one thing I do like about these trays as well is this flat lip here on the edge uh, with the other flat lip. It does really well to uh, keep these balanced on top pretty dang easily. And uh, something that's too that I really like about these trays is they're a little bit wider than the actual tray below. Uh, so that you can kind of position it uh, pretty well on there compared to say bootstrap trays. One thing I dislike about them, whenever you need to take a tray, we'll just kind of stack on top of here to show you and put it into blackout, 
the lips on both of these are the same exact size. So you'll notice whenever you put it on, it usually it's pretty hard to kind of get it lined up and in position and usually you'll let light in through at some point uh, especially with some of the other trays they're actually so long too that they actually warp just a little bit so i like these little trays because there's no warping and they do stack up pretty easily okay so all these are now into blackout uh, this will stay like this for one day and i'll see you guys tomorrow when we when we remove these from blackout and put these into the light all right y'all these have been in blackout now for one full day and i'm really excited to see the results here so let's go ahead and start popping off these top trays and take a peek okay so immediately i can see that we are at the right height and i actually see so, uh, this little broccoli right here i got distracted that's my add kicking in i don't like when stuff sits on the surface like that so i'm gonna go ahead and pull that out and move that out of my way so trade number one the crop looks great we have nice spacing between all the crops we are at a very nice height for broccoli and all the growth looks super solid i'm not seeing any signs of disease or mold or anything like that so it looks great let's move on to tray numero dose everything is looking really good same thing decent spacing on this one and i'm seeing no signs of any kind of mold or disease the crop looks nice and healthy and it's stretched up to the height that i like tray number three all the growth looks super solid on this i'm not seeing any signs of disease or anything like that it looks very healthy there is decent spacing in there but this is a pretty crowded tray i'm curious to see how this is going to uh, end up after about five more days of growth we will see tray at numero quattro so this is the incredibly dense tray and the growth on this looks incredible and surprisingly this has the tallest growth out of all of the trays i wonder if it's because there is so much competition within this tray that the the plants are pushing themselves to grow taller um, because I know that if you plant two different types of seeds directly next to each other, they actually begin to compete for nutrients. So I wonder if that's kind of what's happening right here with the height on this tray. It looks incredibly dense and the growth looks happy though. I'm not seeing anything that's showing me signs of disease or mold. Uh, looking within the canopy, I'm not seeing any mold down there. We got a lot of root hairs. So what you're seeing right there is root hairs. There is no mold so far though. Uh, it is nice and damp on the actual crop though so i need to be careful about top watering this good news is this is going to be going into light which means this is going to begin getting bottom water so we're no longer going to be putting moisture into the top of this canopy which is going to be nice especially for these super dense ones over here because if we continue to top water this what's going to happen is that's going to increase our chances of some kind of disease or pathogen or something like that because there's just going to be a lot of moisture trapped within that canopy on the stems and things like that which you don't really want which is why we prefer to actually bottom water all of our trays because the moisture comes from the bottom up into the roots and you're not pouring it across the top of the plant right, let's take a look at all the roots real quick just out of curiosity because i know they were super long yesterday uh, so tray number one looks happy healthy i'm not seeing any signs of disease or mold or anything like that uh, this is a little moist and i don't like that that could be the signs of a potential um kind of fungus happening when the the root is really moist like that let me get a paper towel and wipe my finger off real quick so i'm seeing a little bit of that right here i'm gonna just point and not touch it so i'm seeing a little bit on that the, the, this part of the roots right there uh, on this tray number two as well so good to notice and i mean these roots were directly on top of our shelves yep i'm seeing a little bit of moisture just like really wet looking kind of soggy root on some of these and that could be a potential issue uh tray number four actually surprisingly for the intensity of the root structure has very very low amount of that squishy root syndrome is what i'm going to call it i don't know exactly what it is but i'm gonna call it squishy root syndrome it's a it's now a coin term s r s squishy root syndrome okay so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to get all of these placed into the lights we're going to get some uh, water added to the bottom of these as for the nutrient that i'm going to be using i'm going to be using ocean solution 2-0-3 for the nutrients just because it's an organic nutrient source that we really enjoy um, and it provides really solid growth to all of our trays and i think because these are all so dense we do need something that kind of give them a little bit of a boost of energy or do we just keep it water what do you think mandy what water or nutrients i would do it how we would normally do it in our grow space which we usually use nutrient so okay. I'm gonna do a nutrient. That's a good point. Yeah, this is a density test. We want to see how this would 
if we were to go forward with the seed density, we would have to do it normally. Yeah. yeah. So, okay, but we'll do a nutrients. Okay. So we're going to use the ocean solution 2-0-3. We mix that at 0.5 ounces per gallon and we pH balance it to about 5.8 range. And that's what we're going to be adding into the bottom of all of these trays. Now, one thing that you're going to notice throughout this, all these aren't going to receive the same amount of water. The reason is, is because this tray number one over here is going to require a lot less water than this tray number four over here. It's simply the amount of plants within this that are gonna be sucking up that water and absorbing it and growing. So I'm not gonna be able to use, say one cup per day for all of these. It's gonna probably be like half a cup for this one and like two cups for this one towards the end of the grow uh, because these are gonna be a little bit more demanding. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these introduced into the light, get some water added and I'll see you guys tomorrow for another update. All right, you guys, now these broccoli have been in the light for one full day at this point and all this growth is looking super solid. As you can see, all these cotyledons have greened up really nicely and all these trays are looking really happy. Something that Mandy pointed out that I think is pretty dang cool is you can actually see from the densities, uh, it kind of almost tears up. The, the lowest density is the shortest, moving all the way to the highest density being the tallest. Now that could be that they're fighting for kind of that light. So they keep kind of fighting each other to go taller and taller to get up towards those lights. Uh, that could be a potential part of why that is happening. And it could also be, like I said, whenever two plants are uh, planted really close to each other, they actually compete for nutrients and things. So they could be trying to grow more aggressively because they know that there's more competition. So as for the growth on all of these, taking a look, everything looks really happy. I see that we have removed most of the seed holes. I mean, there's a two, few tiny little seed holes kind of hanging around. Um, but as for everything else, the crop looks super healthy. I am seeing, nope, I thought it was mold, I'll show you. So I saw right here, that's actually root hairs. I thought that was a little bit of mold down at the bottom of that plant, but looking at it, it's all stemming right off of the um, actual stem of the plant. And if it's coming off the plant, usually at the base like that, and it's very fine hairs, it's generally the uh, root hairs and not some kind of mold. So the lowest density is doing pretty dang solid. It looks a little sparse compared to everything else, but I think it, uh, it will be solid, especially considering that this needs a few more days of growth. So it'll have room to stretch into itself. Second tray, this is the uh, 20 gram tray or 15, I forget, it's 10, yeah, 10, 15, 20, 25, yeah. So this is the 15 gram tray. Uh, all the growth on here looks super solid as well. The cotyledon size is really nice. I am noticing a little bit of moisture. So you can see as I kind of brush this, so as for the growth, everything looks solid and stretching it apart a little bit. I'm not seeing any kind of disease or anything down there, just some root hairs and the crop generally looks really happy. On to tray number three, which is our 20 gram tray. So again, crop looks really healthy. Um, as for the height, again, everything kind of tears up. So the first tray being the lowest and everything just seems to kind of increase in height over here. So this is our second tallest tray right now. The cotyledon size is comparable to everything else. And again, I'm seeing a lot of that moisture kind of trapped within this canopy. And that makes sense because we are uh, choked for airflow in here. Now the medium is still very quite wet. So I don't think I'm gonna give this a whole lot of water today. Yeah, and I can still see that there's a decent amount of water still pooling at the bottom from last night's watering. So I need to be careful not to overwater this. On to trade number four. Again, this is just incredibly solid growth. Um, there is a lot of competition happening with this in this tray and this is currently our tallest tray. It's received nothing extra other than more seeds. Uh, so it's pretty cool to see these guys all fighting for height here. So no mold or anything like that. And I'm checking right there because I thought it was mold, but I believe that is root hairs as well. Yep. So we just got root hairs, no sign of disease or mold. The crop looks extremely happy. Some of the lower uh, cotyledons within this canopy are yellowing just a little bit and that's because they haven't fought their way up to the top of this canopy to get light. That's okay. These guys should be darkening up over the next few days. As for the watering, this tray still feels really heavy and I'm noticing there is a little bit of water dripping whenever I tip this. That means that this still has ample water. So I need to be careful again, not to overwater this tray. So I'm just gonna give this a very light watering. What I'm going to do now is we've got probably about four to five more days of growth on all these trays. Instead of doing a day by day, what I'll do is now probably every two days, keep you guys updated with the growth. And what we'll do is every day, I'll just do a quick pan uh, on the days that we don't actually talk about the crops. And then we'll talk about it maybe every, every other day or something. So I'll see you guys tomorrow for an update maybe the day after. All right, today is day seven of this broccoli test. 
for the density trial and everything is looking really happy so I'm just going to do a quick pan across all of them today. So this is the first tray, second tray, third tray, and fourth tray which is just looking crazy. So everything's looking really solid. Still a little bit of uh, moisture trapped in the canopies of the more dense ones but that should be going away hopefully soon. All right, y'all, we are on day nine of this broccoli density trial and everything is looking really, really solid still. So I'm still noticing a good amount of moisture within the canopy of the more densely seeded ones, but I'm not noticing any decay on the actual cotyledons themselves. And overall, all the growth looks super solid. And I'm really excited because tomorrow is gonna be harvest day. So I'll see you guys then. All right, you guys, we made it to day 10 of this grow and I'm really excited because all these crops actually look very healthy and I'm really happy with them. So what we're gonna do is do a quick overview of all these trays before I get into the finer details after harvesting. So taking a look at our first tray over here, remember this is our 10 gram tray. The growth on this looks super solid. We have a nice flat plateau on the top. The growth looks very even. Cotyledon size is nice. Green coloration on the cotyledons is really nice and dark. And overall, I'm very happy with the growth. Looking within the canopy, there is not a whole lot of undergrowth. And what undergrowth there is does look nice and healthy. On to tray number two. Now this is our 15 gram tray. And again, same thing, nice and happy growth here. I will say it's a little bit taller than our first tray. And it does have a little bit more mounding, but the cotyledon size is great. Coloration is great. I'm not seeing any signs of decay or rot or anything negative. Looking within the canopy, I'm seeing that we do have some undergrowth, but that undergrowth does look healthy and it's gonna be okay to be harvested. On to tray number three, this is our 20 gram tray. Same thing as before. So I'm noticing a lot more smaller cotyledons on this tray compared to the first two. But overall, the growth does look good. There's nothing that shows any signs that I can't harvest this from first glance. And looking within the canopy, I am noticing a decent amount of moisture on the undergrowth. And that can be slightly problematic whenever you go to package up this product because that's gonna make the product decay a lot quicker in the fridge. So that's just something to be cautious of. Is it still harvestable? Yes, absolutely. On to the last tray. This is our insane density tray of 25 grams on this tray. And the growth looks really great. We have a lot of mounding going on. The height is the, I believe, yes, it is the tallest out of the entire group. And a lot of the cotyledons look nice and large, though there are a decent amount of small cotyledons mixed in. When we spread this canopy, I am seeing a good amount of undergrowth and that undergrowth does have some moisture on it. So same thing on the as the tray before, that that moisture on that undergrowth is going to make this product last not as long whenever it is time to actually store it. Okay, so everything looks great at first glance. All the coloration looks great. Growth looks great. Nothing on all of these trays. And I'm actually really happy because I didn't have to treat this at all or any of these high density trays with any kind of antifungal or anything like that. So the fact that we were able to make it all the way to harvest day and not have any decay or rot or disease or anything like that is really promising. After our first glance, everything's looking incredibly solid. What we need to do now is I need to harvest every single one of these trays. And what I will do after we harvest is we're gonna do a taste test. We're gonna look at the appearance of the crop, see how it looks. We're also gonna take a look at the grow medium itself, see if there's more disease or maybe some kind of rot or mold on like the super high density or the very low density, something like that. And we're also gonna take a peek at the roots because remember when we started this out, we actually had a little bit of what looked like some kind of pathogen or something starting in those roots where they were getting a little bit slimy. So I'm excited to see how everything actually looks health-wise once we are able to chop all this away and look at that. So I'll see you guys in just a moment once we have actually harvested all of these. All right, you guys, before I get into the harvest weights on all of these, I just wanna quickly say, if you don't mind, go ahead and smash that thumbs up button because it really does help out with the YouTube algorithm and helps us create more content like this. If you haven't already, click that subscribe button and the notification bell is that way you guys can get notified when we release new videos. So let's get into harvest weights. All right, I have finished harvesting all four of the trays. Now let's discuss all of their harvest weights. Starting over here on tray one, we had a total harvest weight of 131 grams. On tray two, we had a total harvest weight of 228 grams. Tray number three had a harvest weight of 280 grams. And tray number four had a total harvest weight of 358 grams. Now this makes sense that you're gonna see all these weights get higher and higher because the seed density go up, did go up and up. 
Now, what I wanted to know was how efficient was each tray? So taking a look at tray one, remember we had 10 grams to start with and we had 131 grams of harvest, which means we harvested 13.1 grams for every one gram of seed that we planted. Tray number two, we seeded with 15 grams and we harvested 228 grams. That means that we got 15.2 grams per one gram of seed. Tray number three had 20 grams seeded and 280 gram harvest, which means we got 14 grams per one gram of seed. And tray number four had 25 grams seeded into it and a harvest rate of 358 grams, which means we got 14.32 grams of product for the one gram of seed that we harvested. Okay, so tray number two was the most efficient tray out of all the groups with 15.2 grams per one gram of seed. The second most efficient tray was the tray number four with 14.32 grams for every gram of seed that we seeded. The third most efficient was tray number three at 14 grams per one gram of seed. And the least efficient tray was actually uh, tray number one with the 13.1 grams of seed uh, per one gram of seed that was seeded. So the reason I think that this could have potentially happened is tray number one had a lot more time and space to grow. So it didn't really focus on kind of fighting each other and doing that crazy aggressive growth that we saw on all of these, which is potentially why we got higher harvest weights. Now, something else that is a slight factor is trays number three and four did have a decent amount of moisture in their canopies. So that could have increased their yields substantially because water is actually very, very heavy. So what I would have to do to see the most accurate way of actually determining which tray had the best harvest weight would be take all the product and dehydrate it and then weigh that out. But that is honestly really complicated. So I'll just kind of give these two a slight handicap because they did uh, have a little bit of moisture in the canopy. So they're probably not as efficient as they claim to be. But tray number two didn't really have any of that moisture in its canopy. So I really do believe that tray number two was the most efficient out of all these groups. Now let's quickly take a look at all of the uh, grow mediums and see what's going on with each one of them. The grow medium looks nice. I'm not seeing any signs of mold or decay. There is a little bit of that right there is mold coming off of a, a seed that just did not germinate well but for actual mold because of potential like airflow issues i'm not really seeing anything problematic on it let's take a look at the roots as well so the roots do not look as beautiful as i would love but that's because there's some cocoa mixed into it and they don't really look bad at all honestly i think they look pretty decent they are a little bit slimy and there's some uh, looks like a little bit of broccoli tried to grow upside down, down into the water. So it was kind of molded down there, but no issues there that I'm really seeing. Okay, and as for tray number two, the medium does look pretty good. I am noticing a little bit of mold kind of scattered throughout. And I have noticed a few of those fungus gnats. That's because we had compost in our grow space and it kind of released a few of them. But overall, it's really nice. I mean, I am seeing a few little spots, but nothing like problematic. Oh my goodness, this is going to ruin this crop or so this is not harvestable or eat edible. So nothing too problematic. As for the roots, nice and healthy structure. Again, it's a little brown from the cocoa, but overall, I don't see anything uh, that is an issue within this other than the, the broccoli like that likes to grow upside down into the water reservoirs. Trade number three. Taking a look at the grow medium, it's kind of hard to see here because this is so incredibly dense with the stem. But looking into it, I'm not seeing a whole lot of mold or anything like that. There are a few seeds over in this corner that did mold, but that doesn't look like it was an airflow issue because those are on the outside and there was plenty of airflow on the outside. So it just looked like some seed that did mold. Now right here, let me try to take a good look at this because it is hairy. Then it appears just to be root hairs. I'm not, I don't think that's an actual mold yeah that's all just coming straight off of the stems itself so that doesn't seem to be mold in that thickest part where all those stems were so again overall it looks nice and healthy nothing problematic and same goes with the roots it's so funny that so many of those broccoli grew upside down okay tray number four taking a look at this same thing so there was a lot of seed holes i will say that because this was so incredibly dense whenever I was harvesting, I had to kind of chop a little bit higher and you could see how much stem I actually had to cut off because there was just so many seed holes and stuff locked into it. But as for issues with mold or anything, I'm not really seeing any. This is just very, very dense root hairs right here. There's nothing actually really decaying. It's just incredibly dense root hairs all throughout. So again, I'm not, I didn't see any issues at all throughout any of these tra trays. Uh, with mold, there was slight spotting, but that's just normal microgreens. You're going to get little tiny spots of mold 
Uh, it's just kind of inevitable if you keep the, your trays well watered. Uh, and the roots on tray number four, again, look really healthy. There was only like two or three little broccolis that grew upside down. And overall, it's extremely happy. Bam. Okay, so let me get all these moved out of my way and we will do a blind taste test. All right, guys, so one thing I wanna quickly talk about, this is one of the most common questions that we get is what do you do with your medium after you're finished with it? And it's really, really easy. So I'm just gonna kind of demonstrate. We have a compost outside and what we do is I will take this grow medium and I will just literally, I'll just flip it. I'm gonna pretend like this is our compost right here. I just kind of go like that, right down into our compost pile and you'll have usually some roots or something kind of stuck on. Just make sure you kind of knock all of that off. And then that's literally all I do. I knock that out into my compost and then I will add some dry medium or whatever I need to do to help that compost kind of break all this down. And then I will re reuse this in our garden in the future. So I just want to let you guys know about that because it is one of our most common questions. Okay, before I get into the taste testing, let's go ahead and talk about the appearance on each one of these crops. So starting over here, this was tray number one. It did have the shortest growth of everything, but overall the crop is very healthy. There's not a whole lot of undergrowth. And if there is undergrowth, it does look quite healthy. Onto tray number two, it's a little bit tr taller than the uh, crop was in tray number one. And there was a decent amount more undergrowth, but again, that undergrowth does look nice and healthy. There's not really any moisture trapped on it. Tray number three was again, taller than all the groups before it, but there's quite a bit more of the undergrowth in this one, and the undergrowth is beginning to appear unhealthy at this density. And on tr to tray number four, this was the tallest of all the groups. We got a ton of stems. Overall, the crop does look really healthy, but there was a good amount of undergrowth, and the undergrowth was the uh, poorest, like it was in the worst condition out of all these groups, and it was the most concerning. So that's it for just a quick glance at all the appearance of these. If I had to choose appearance-wise, which one I would choose, I would go with group two because it's a really nice height. There's not too much stems. Cotyledons are really nice. The undergrowth is nice and healthy. That's the one I would choose for uh, best overall appearance. And let's go ahead and do a quick taste test on all of these. Well, I am blindfolded so that I am trying not to be biased here. So Mandy, if you'll show them which one we're gonna eat, and remember it's an order of one, two, three, four, all the way up, and you just show which one and I'll munch it. Was that all of them? Yeah. Okay. Well, let's do less next time. Nope. I mean, just because I've done so many taste tests, I can tell that this is substantially taller than the rest. So I feel like this was group three or four. Overall though, I'm very happy with the flavor. There's nothing, no bitterness, nice brassica flavor, nice and strong, nice and juicy. Okay, overall flavor for that group, it was really nice. There was something in there that I didn't love as much. It was very strong on brassica flavor, but there was also a slight other flavor. Don't really know what it was. Uh, it wasn't as mild as the first group that you sh uh, shared with me. So it might have just been more flavor. Okay, so ready for next one? Yes. Again, very juicy, very nice, lots of flavor. Overall, they've all basically tasted the same at this point. Just, I've noticed some with a little bit more stem and some not. Next one. Oh, it's so tiny. This has gotta be group one. Okay, so it's just, that was really nice, but there's it was very lacking. Like it wasn't, I don't know, like it, it disappeared very quickly, which I guess is kind of nice. If you're using that on a salad or a sandwich or something, you want it to go down quickly. That was nice, but it just didn't have as much grab or crunch or bite to it and I wish it would, stuck, would have stuck around just a little bit longer in my mouth. As for flavor, it was really awesome, and I really think everything so far, was that all of them? Yep. I think all, all the flavors on all of these were really, really nice. That first one did seem to be um, the more mild of all the groups, so if I had to choose a winner for flavor, it would have to be two or three probably, because yeah, it felt like it was a nice chewiness on those. So two or three winner on flavor, I can't remember which is best, but it was one of those two. So let me get this pulled off. Boop. Okay, so tell me in what order, what, what did we do? Uh, first one was number three, okay. One. Okay. Two. Two, okay. Three. Okay. Four, yep. Yeah. Okay, makes the most sense. All right, you guys, so now what I need to do is I need to choose an overall winner for this experiment. For me personally, I'm going to go with tray number two. That was a tray that was seeded at 150% higher than our normal seeding density. And I think that that tray did give us the best growth, appearance, taste, 
and it was the most efficient tray of all of them. It gave us 15 grams of seed for every one gram of tray that we seeded. While trays three and four did give us really good growth, I didn't really like the undergrowth that was happening and the, the potential of the moisture being captured in the canopy and what that could do to our stored product. It's really gonna shorten the life of the product overall but we were able to get some like really crazy heavy harvest weights out of it. And in fact, tray number four gave us the same harvest weight that we get out of 1020 tray with half the tray size, but it didn't come without any kind of repercussions. Like I said, we did have a lot of undergrowth and some of that was beginning to decay and there was quite a bit of moisture, which again is gonna shorten the shelf life of our product. What I've actually done now is I've started some other trays with the same seed density of tray number four, where it's really high seed density. And what I'm doing is I'm gonna see how we can possibly seed the tray differently to allow better airflow through the tray and see if we can get away with that same high seed density and maybe get rid of that moisture and undergrowth. Since this test turned out so well and I actually found a more efficient seeding density for broccoli, I think now we should actually expand out to radishes and other different types of crops to see what we can find works best for seed density in our grow space. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to give us a thumbs up. If you dislike this video, give us a thumbs down. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the section below and we'd love to get those answered for you as soon as we possibly can. Our Facebook and our Instagram are both at OnTheGrow Farms and our website is www.onthegrow.net. Thank you so much. Have a great day and keep on believing.